province you have here. We always have the province here. No, I, I just talked to you. I'm sorry, Dave. All right, you can call me Isaiah. If it's too hard, you can call me David. The children yeah. call me Dowen. Dowen. Children call me. Yeah, when I talk to you, you know, it's just all right. Talk to you. So we just need to be careful. Yeah. 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 We're talking about we we're talking about the the role of the teacher. What kind of role does he can play as a teacher? You know, I always uh, have no. Uh, when I was. Uh, uh, the professors, young professors, uh, uh, junior professors in uh, about 20, or maybe 25, or oh, 30 years ago. I first off, when I came back from the States and began to teach at the university, I, I didn't have any kind of confidence there. I, I didn't know how to entertain my students. Sometimes you, you still have this, you know, like this kind of poker face thinking at you and, and, and for very to sleep quite easy. And I tried to to shift my position as a teacher, to see that if I were sitting there, like you were sitting there, what did I want to get from the professors? What did I get from my teacher? This is the way how I adjust myself uh, in different kinds of ways to make myself more entertaining, uh, more welcome to my students. Okay, uh, this is compared to the second, uh, on my second talk. Maybe you can just uh, just give me some inputs too later. Um, talking about the uh, I, I, the purpose of introducing this uh, idea, the so-called situation learning, is to you know to change maybe to uh, help you understand that in your English classroom we don't want you to teach or lecture all the time. We wish that the uh, learning the language. Uh, the better way to learn a language is to use the language or do the language games. You know, sometimes learning by doing is a good way, but not necessarily the only way. You have different kinds of. But when you when you are faced with uh, uh, students of a huge size, a class of a huge size, like a 40, uh, 20, or 30 or 40 students, it's impossible to run a language class in such a huge size of the classroom, right? So the, the language class requires you know, uh, some kind of practice, one-to-one -one or even individual practice all the time. But when you face, when you have this big size, the huge size of the class, so how many of you students are there in your class? 30, how many? Do you have more than 30? 20, 20, 30. 20, 20, 20, 25. 25, 25 is still the, the big class, right? In the language class. But do you have, I mean, the problem is that does any all the student have does everyone student every student have the opportunity talking to you or practice the language using the language in your classroom? Eventually, eventually. Yeah. But sometimes the the high achiever or student who learns something outside the classroom will take the advantage of speaking. Is that right? They just yeah. raise their hand. And the, the weaker students, the slow learners, or even those uh, slow learners, will be stay hiding, hiding, you know, hiding over there without talking. So how are we going to do that? I mean, uh, there will be simple strategies of encouraging. You know, the what I mean here is uh, you know, let me organize my thoughts here. I don't think uh, in classroom. The high achiever should have more opportunities of using the language because they are already have the opportunities in the cram school or some of the language centers outside the classroom. The people, the students who have no chance, who are quite shy, who are slow learners, must be given more opportunity to practice because your classroom is the only place that they can practice English. Okay, but it's difficult for you to manage that kind of classroom, especially when you have about 25 students. You know. but I'd like to introduce, uh, so I think maybe uh, one of the uh, opportunities uh, for, one of the opportunities for you to run a class is, is using some of worksheets or activities allow, which will allow students, individual students to practice or use the language by themselves instead of, you know, have this kind of one-to-one -one, uh, practice. So it's the ready learnings. Here, we want to reverse, maybe some of you have already known that, we want to reverse the way how you think about being a teacher. What is the role of a teacher? 
I always ask myself four questions here. What am I as a teacher? I always ask, what am I teaching? What am I teaching? And who am I teaching? And then how may I teach it? Okay. Most of the time in this kind of workshop, workshop for teacher training, we talk about how I will teach the pedagogies. But I think we have to forget about the pedagogy. Each one of you knows how to teach. We know always know how to teach. You are most of you are much you know you are much better teacher as a teachers than I am. I'm, I I have very limited experience of teaching in elementary school. Yeah, I, I used to teach about maybe three or four years in elementary school, but not anymore. But you have you're much better than as a teacher than I am. I'm not going to teach you how to teach your students. I just want to to see that to remind you that maybe you have different kinds of way of teaching. Right? The professor is not the good channels here. I, I have to admit that. You know, not good channels here. It, it, it's not the it's not a good channel to teach you uh, all these kind of pedagogies, all these kind of teaching methods. The professor is good at uh, you know reminding you or maybe criticizing. I have to say criticizing the way how you teach to change the way your mindset to see that how you're going to shift your old-fashioned style into innovative styles. Maybe there was some kind of innovative styles there, right? Teaching does not equal learning. Uh, you teach, but students are not learning. Sometimes it happens in many, many classrooms, especially in Taiwan. Really, I mean, we teach, Taiwanese teachers enjoy teaching a lot. They teach a lot. And most of the time, students are quiet, listen to the teacher. But I don't like this, so I think that it has to be changed. We have to reverse all the classes. We talk about a free classroom, but I don't like the idea of free classrooms either. I think a free classroom is just an idea. Sometimes when I, I deal that in my, in my university, and nobody you know, pay attention to me. I asked them to, for instance, last year, last, uh, last week, I asked them to watch one of the movies, uh, uh, one of the movies, a uh, lottery, yes, yeah, one of the movies, lottery, it's a uh, short story. And they and then come back this week and have more discussions in the classroom, and they just show their own experience, or the reading response, response to that. But half of students say that they didn't have time to watch the movies. Or they said that, oh, my, my, my computers were down this, semester, this week. Or oh, I have no Wi-Fi in my dormitory. <laughs> so what can I do? Kick the half of students out? Because, well, we have discussion there, right? So students never prepare at all in Taiwan. No, they, they, they are not strongly motivated. So I'm not talking about a free classroom. I'm, I'm talking about move your student around to allow them to do something, to do your practice, to have this kind of real life practice by using the language. Yeah. Less is uh, more than. It's, there's a lot of truth in saying that when you go to school, the trauma is that we must stop learning, we must now accept being taught. That's a tragedy in classroom. Ken Robinson said that the school is a better way, it's a very ideal place to kill the talents of creativity. Right? We always have, because we always have the unifying model to give our students. But not all students are the same. But how are you going to have you are going to differentiate different kinds of, or, or give students different kinds of way of learning. That's a big challenge to the teachers. I don't think I find the perfect way for that. I don't find, I, I feel frustrated most of the time in classroom because right now when I was teaching the, when I was, when I'm teaching, when I teach the introduction to literature in one of these uh, private school, uh, university, I have 61 students there. And only about half of them are listening to me. Half of them are just absent minded. I can see from their eyes that they are not. They even their eyes are looking at me, their minds is not there. You know. So what can I do? I feel so frustrated. I, I use every way. I play the song, movie, even dance in classroom to attract their attention. And at least half of them, about 30 students, seem to be 
Now then, what can I do with that? So after each class, I feel I want to quit, but you know, I still need the money. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's a torture for a teacher to teach a class who's you know you know a class uh, which seems to be not there, half of it, and not there. So I, I don't know how to you know, deal with that. So, and, 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 and I, I'm thinking about early retirement, but still, you know, uh, really, I, I don't have enough pension for that over the, for the rest of my life, so you have to hold on over there. Anyway, so, uh, so I, I just think about uh, how I'm going to push my students to learn. I, I, I already, you know, about four years ago, I gave up teaching. I mean, I gave up teaching students a lot of things. I believe that learning is more important than my teaching. So I, most of the time, in this uh, two hours class, and the, the class that I mentioned about Chitashi to leadership, in these two hours classes, I talk, uh, I, I lecture about only 20 minutes. The other one morning, one hour, a half, I just motivate my student to do something for me. They have to do a lot of worksheet, they have to do a lot of discussions, they do their all the jobs by themselves. I just watch and sit there and then monitor their learning most of the time. Maybe you say that I'm lazy. No, I'm quite busy. I've been busy before uh, for the preparation, but in the classrooms, I'm, I just let myself go and then let all the students do the job for me. So teaching is quite different. It's, it's quite different from the learning. I told Spasio to whistle. Okay, they, they can still want the teaching and learning here. So what do you still learn from you? Especially when you mean it's still only 40 minutes every week or every two weeks. What do you learn from you? Ask yourself, what do you learn from you? Anyone specific? For instance, how about last week? What did your student carry with them last week after 40 minutes in your class? Anyone? Yeah. Oh, well, I, I, I am absolutely certain that my students uh, carried the vocabulary away because that's... Uh, How many words? Six. Six. Okay. I know that because that's what I assessed. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so would you please do the check next week to see that these six words still stay with them? Last week I assessed the vocabulary from the previous week. So they did? Yeah. I, it was an assessment for retention. Okay, so retention is still there. Uh, the six words are still there. Yeah. Okay, good, wonderful. But how about the others? Six words. Don't you think that vocabulary is an easy part, especially in the elementary school? It's, you the see, yeah? it's the low hanging fruit. It's the obvious thing that everybody should be doing. Yeah. Yeah, but you, even you know the words, the six words, but you still cannot speak English. You know? So what's the the, the next, next step is what? Combine these six words into a sentence. That's the more difficult part, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a, you know, in the elementary school, most of the teachers like to teach vocabulary, the words. But how can you go, go beyond the vocabulary part and then try to combine those words into a sentence and, uh, uh, and, and ask your student to, to say something there, something meaningful, instead of just individual words. Have, have, how many, have you done that so far? Activities in sixth grade or so, fifth grade, right? In the high level, so you are is uh, you you is elementary. Elementary, no, which grade? Oh, uh, that was a uh, sixth grade. But still, they are learning the vocabulary. How about the sentence? Yeah. Do they, make, do, do they begin to make some sentences? No, yeah. No, they're, they're, they're well beyond beginning to, to make sentences, uh, focusing more about... How do you make sure that they, they make sentences, they can make their own sentence, and they still keep that a week later? Uh, well, you, know, you, you can assess that through different modalities, through, uh, through individual conversations, through teamwork, through, uh, through written uh, assessments. Can, can, uh, you check, can you check individuals? I mean, you don't have time. We have 25 students in the classroom. That so how can you make sure that everyone learns something from them? You can either uh, draw that out over several weeks. Otherwise, you've got uh, 25 students for 40 minutes. That's about 80 seconds per student. That's not yeah, enough. That's not enough. Right.
So you, you can have conversations over a longer period of time, or you can have like a good conversation with one kid. Um, uh, or, I'm sorry, you can have shorter conversations. So just so the check and check and this kind of evaluation. So maybe uh, every every period or even yeah, continually, yeah, continue, continue, so, if assessments, that kind of, in, in different kind of way, not formal way, right, that the written test. Uh, both formal and informal. And informal. Yeah. Okay. So this kind of evaluation is uh, one of good way to make sure that you're learning something from you, right? So ask yourself, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to give you any kinds of, you know, you, you say that, you know, good, uh, in the writing method, teaching method, no. Just remind you that uh, what you still learn from you, especially when you miss the only 40 minutes. So, about innovative teaching. Are we, are we serious about teaching? Yes, we are serious about teaching. We always talk about innovative teaching to, to work out some kind of knowledge. So what is innovative? Innovations. There are four elements in defining what the you know, innovation or to tell us what innovation is. Now some must be creative, disruptive, or quite different from the traditional one. It has some kind of, if, but if that innovation has no, if, does not have any kind of value, does cannot have any kind of application, it's just a crazy idea, right? It's just crazy, it's not innovative. Sometimes we say that there's a innovation, there's kind of creativity over there, no, that's not really right. That kind of innovation and creativity must have some kind of value, carry some kind of value, say. And it can be what? Duplicate. It can be sustainable. It can be applied to individuals. It can be generalized. Too, right? Everyone can use that. That's so called innovation. So uh, I want to skip that part of our class press. There are many ways in in teaching that we can do one. Here, in 21st century, I just want to remind you that there will be uh, uh, some of the goals that in 21st centuries, and each one of you in the modern in the technologies will teach you that there will be different kinds of pedagogies that you can use, and you can use the kind of pedagogy to develop the thinking skills and spirit. Uh, foster problem solving skills or this kind of stuff here. Okay, well, to, 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 and the key features are this one. Uh, but the, the idea about uh, the, 20, the development of 21st century uh, skills, uh, we always want our students to develop kind of skills, is about the fluency and literacy. In the past, the United States government, I mean, the local government, the federal government, believed that uh, literacy is the key is a very elementary issues in elementary education. The literacy people can read, either it's a technical literacy, or it's a, it's a reading literacy, or speaking literacy, or whatever. But literacy is a basic competency that people can have to develop in order to go forward or to, to go for any kind of advanced studies. But right now, literacy in literacy, we try to emphasize, especially in the native speaker, I mean, in the United States, in the native speaker classroom, we try to emphasize the accuracy, that people can pronounce the word, can write away, write away in the correct grammar. But in foreign language classroom, maybe fluency is more important than literacy. What I mean by fluency, what I mean by fluency, I'm talking about so-called the unconscious competent. Here. If you, what does that mean for language education? <coughs> Let's take a look at this table here. Incompetency, okay. We have unconscious incompetency. Means you don't know that you don't know. Right? Sometimes uh, a lot of people, you know, they, they are incompetent but they don't know that. Okay. Once you know that you are incompetent, you begin to learn something. Right? You know that you you, 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 you are aware that you don't know, you don't know how to learn the language and you begin to develop. You want to learn something from others. You want to make some kind of learning. And then you are aware of learning something. You are aware of using some of the vocabulary. You can make some sentences. That's so sort of conscious coming. That's what we call literacy. You know something maybe. You can master some of the the, the, the language, you can use the, the language quite well. But what I mean here is the, the, the more important thing say, for the non native speaker or even for the native speaker is the sort of fluency. You know something, but you are not aware of that. 
You make some mistakes, it's okay. I make mistakes. But I still can communicate. I have that kind of competence. And I'm competent in talking to other people. I can use simple language or even poor English to communicate with other people. And and I just speak in that language unconsciously. Without you know, we all oh, I have to yeah, this is past tense, this is a second. This is the present tense, or I have to put S. This is A and A and this is H or on and in. Yes, I'm going to meet you on 10 o'clock. Yes, 10 o'clock. Maybe I make a mistake, but but I still can say something over there, right? So this is what I mean by words. So we believe that in Taiwanese, we don't expect that all the students in Taiwan to speak perfect English. Well, all the students can become English professors or English teachers to, to speak in impeccable English without making any kind of grammatical errors. No, we don't need that. We expect a student to develop two things. One is they can communicate. They can use, they believe that English is one of the good ways to communicate with foreigners. You can, the English is a, is a good tool to use. The second is to still to develop or to keep that kind of interest in learning something different from their own culture or own language. That kind of keeping the interest and developing some kind of competency unconsciously are the two primary goals for English education in Taiwan. Okay. And later if you want to develop your, 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 your competency, you want to have better performance in your language, Maybe you can just make some kind. You can learn something. You can, you can do much better by, you know, learning from uh, for 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 the kind of higher goals. Uh, but you want to become a lawyer, international lawyer, or you want to become English professors. Maybe you have other ways to do that. But for a basic English education here in Taiwan, especially in elementary school, to keep the interest in learning language, to have that kinds of fluency. Now, I'm not talking about the, quite, the, the high level friends, I've got the low level friends. It's one of the, the, the very primary goals in, 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 in English education here, especially for the middle school. Okay. That kind of friends. When I talk about friends, I'm not talking about accuracy. I'm talking about people can talk. People can use their poor or even incorrect English to say something that you can understand, at least you can understand. Okay. And once they know how to talk, how, once they begin to open their mouths, and they already develop a kind of interest in their language. That is the primary goal of this one. Otherwise, two, only 40 minutes, or only totally about 80 minutes per week in elementary school, and, and for the first four years, how can a person Learn the language within this a few uh, no, just you know, less than two hours. Is it possible? If you want to learn the language, just you know, if you want to learn the language well, you must be exposed to at least you know how many hours based upon European studies, you need about more than two hundred hours within about two or three months to have a beginning foundation for advanced study for language. So it's impossible here. Here in Taiwan, we take English as a kind of subject instead of a skill. That's a wrong idea, ideology in, in English education, in language education. But we cannot help it. Right? We cannot help it. We teach English as a kind of subject instead of a skill. That's a, the that's a wrong way. That's a wrong way. We want to change that. I don't like the textbooks at all. You, you get this, this terrible things in our textbooks. But the whole teachers and our educational system force us to do something we don't like. But you have to survive in this kind of poor system. Please help me with that. Yeah, that's, your, that's why we invite you to Taiwan. Because you have your new idea, you have your own way of teaching, and you, you can, how do I say, you know, rock the boat to tell us that some of the local teachers' teaching style, the, the, the way we teach English is not correct. And you still help us to improve. So your job is not only to teach your kids. Your job is to 
you know, to introduce different kinds of way you know, to help the local teacher. Maybe some, some, something is there. There will be different kind of alternative. There will be the alternative way of teaching our students how to you know, master a language, how to, how to use a language. You know, that is part of your, just mentioned part of, part of your presence here. Right? So, uh, in, if you want to say that this is the uh, innovations, you are saying that the, uh, you are, I'm sorry. I don't have any kinds of new ideas here. I want, I, want, I want to say I want to say that the learning instead of teaching is the first concept, the main concept of 21st century educational ideology. We are talking about what you want to teach. We are talking about what to learn and how to learn from you. And there, I just have a, a, a short list of some of the new or popular methods or tricks in trials language. Those are the, the tricks and methods used by more, many local teachers here in Taiwan. Maybe some of you are already using this one. It's a gaming, board game, computer games, online games, collaborative learning group or teamwork, technology. Some of your students, or even in this uh, uh, Wenchang Senior High School, they are, they are introducing they are, they are introducing the AI classroom or AR and VR here. Then by doing the task-based learning or contextual strategy learning, English village, bilingual language, uh, making things, or even some of story learning, or project-based learning, paper cutting, drawing, cooking, mini films, branding learning, virtues of real-life classroom, or the other class and activity, TPR, dancing, singing, or whatever. And the last one is for high levels of learning, so to learn, to think, or to express. You think, I don't like this kind of idea, they say that to learn a language well, you must think and express. But I believe that to learn a language, you don't have to think. Always we think without, we, we learn, we speak language without thinking at all. That is not great. So those are the new and popular methods in Taiwan and classroom. Do they work? How do, they know that, how do you know that they work? So, what do you have in your mind? The, my question, I want to, how do you know that those works or those tricks work in your classroom? So I think I know that most of you have your activities. You design your own <coughs> learning games. So when you design your games, what do you have in mind? What do you have in mind? Give an example of your trick and develop on your purpose for designing it. And tell us how you how it works and reach your original goal. Would you please uh, just think about a few one minute and just give me one example of what you have been doing in your classroom right now in your in your school and to tell me that to share with us that your purpose of designing it and how do you think that this this activity reaches your, your goals for that. Can you feel that? We just uh, I don't have the any, any volunteer who want to share some of your tricks in your classroom? What I don't really have any tricks because we don't play games. We, we don't play games. For example, uh, there's this one class, uh, we're teaching the sentence pattern, do you have the time? Yes, I do. No, I don't. What is the time? And they come up with our, uh, you know, in the workbook, they put their own numbers and they go around and talk to other children and we watch that this is happening. So they'll say it's 8.37, things like that. So that is... They're moving around, they're doing the activity. They're not shooting balls in a hoop or anything like that. It's a boring class, right? <laughs> <laughs> what time is it? Do you have time? Yeah, this is a uh, uh, class one. Uh, I think less take terms and people just quit, ask qu questions to and each other. That <laughs> is. They don't feel bored? Uh, maybe, but who said learning is supposed to be hyper excitement? Okay, great. <laughs> you know, it's not, I'm not an entertainer. I'm not a Hollywood star or Bollywood star for that matter. Yeah. I'm okay. just uh, a <laughs> thing yeah. so, 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 we have to keep in mind is we are only a, we work within a certain framework of what our schools want us to do. 
some schools want us to be more structured based, less yeah. activities, um, okay. and some of them want us to be more activity based. So it really depends upon the school. I'm okay, my school says okay, you do activities, but I know some schools are more serious, they prefer to be more structured. No, no, I, I don't mean that you have to entertain your, 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 your students. We are in China, we are not talking about showmanship. No, I, what I mean is, is uh, you design some of your activities, right? I'm, I'm, activity may be quite, some of them will be quite serious. Some of them are no, more fun, right? So when you say that, that is the one of the activities there, right? You just have peer learn, peer practice. Yes, but right? they also we put the clock on and we give like three minutes. You know what's fun? When the kid goes maybe to Jabu or Happy to ask a question, they go like this, slide it or ha! You know, so they get a chance to have a little fun. Then they ask it. So they stop. They, yeah. They, 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 be quiet. Don't dance. There are children that are more kinesthetic. That's so fine. You shake your, your butt, yeah, but you do that. Your activities are too fun. boring, so they just try to create some kind of fun for that. That's right. right. That's what you got to do in life. Even coming here is boring, but I'm trying to. You know, <laughs> no, I'm going to enjoy myself. I eat I'm the sorry. biscuit. I'm I sorry to say that. No, no, I'm just saying. Boring. Well, I find, you, I find you very entertaining. <laughs> yes, no, we're entertaining. Yes, well, right, I'm not. To remind you of that kind of strength, you yes, know, entertain your students. No. Conscious <laughs> keep it up. Keep it up. Yeah, that's good. How about the others? I mean, activity. I'm not talking about the games. I'm talking about the main activity. You design some activity for your students. How do you know how they work? For instance, you say that you give them, you say that game, you know, you just... In, so I will them. set a theme. If my theme is teamwork, yes. then I will know that they have understood the activity and they have successfully completed it. If together they accomplish the task that I give them. Okay. But how, how do you... How are you going to make sure or to check that they learn something from that kind of game? Or sometimes students sometimes just have, have fun with the games, but they learn nothing from the games. That is happening. That has been happening in many language schools in Taiwan. Cram school, like uh, uh, in, in a lot of cram schools, that they still have a lot of fun singing and dancing in the classroom, they learn nothing from the school. Interest is good, but learning efficacy. It's, it's not there, right? So, you going to say something? I've, uh, I'm very conflicted in the way I teach my activities because normally the school says it has to be a fun activity. It has to be really fun. That's what we want. But at the same time, we have requirements. We want you to assess the students. We have mandatory evaluations. So, I find that for me, with my students here at this school, it helps to develop a deeper relationship with them, not just teacher students. So I try to find out what their interests are because more than academics, I find helpful that it, it, you have to enhance their interest in the language. A lot of these kids are very computer savvy. They're way they're beyond uh, my knowledge of computers. So I found that they're very interested in social media, for example. They all have Twitter accounts, Instagram, Facebook. Yeah. They follow their idols, their singers. And sometimes they go online and they have difficulty following instructions. They don't know what you know their favorite celebrities are saying and they want to know. And they email me about it or they come to the office and they yes. want to know. So I think what I have to do is develop this speaking motivation through their interests, specifically with technology. So my lessons are sometimes have to do with what they're interested in. These kids play a lot of computer games. Yeah. They spend a lot of time surfing the internet. So if I can sort of steer uh, English and their interest in the same direction, I think it's better than, you know. Just, just the pure language class. Academic requirements, requirements. exactly. Uh, it's facilitating their interests. It's also uh, stimulating their interests. And yeah. it's just, I try to design something where they can, you know, sort of pretend they're on Twitter and writing messages. Have you talked to this to the principal or to no more teachers about this, your idea? Not quite, like, because it doesn't always work. It's not a perfect system. None of my systems are, my lessons are, you know, uh, uh, I'm lucky if they're successful sometimes. Uh, they're not great. Not every kid gets it. But I find that a good way of assessing the success of my lesson is if the kids keep coming back for more. If they're emailing, if they're showing interest. If, wow, selfies. I didn't know American kids took that many selfies and talked about their selfies and their journals. So, 
it's really about finding your interest and developing lessons around that uh, more than the actual vocabulary. So vocabulary, your grammar stuff, or this kind of stuff. Right, right. And, and um, yeah, it's, let's say you had a, an idol, a K-pop, Korean pop idol that just so happens to leave messages online in English. These kids will go up, you know, will go into the website and say, I don't understand what he's saying, but I want to understand. So yeah. if you center a lesson around that, you know, sometimes the English isn't perfect, it's casual, it's, it's okay. not professional, but the interest is there. And it's better than the kid saying, I'm only learning this because my mom told me to learn this. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. the professor, yeah. the teacher. Yeah, 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 your idea is uh, what I'm promoting here in Taiwan. I want to change uh, some kind of English re educational revolution here in Taiwan. So see, now English is not just you know, some kind of the very stuff, some kind of stuff you just learn as a kind of subject, you just practice the vocabulary, you just practice some of the grammar or sentence patterns, and, and then they go for the test. Maybe those students' uh, test grades are not, so, are not improving, but their enthusiasm, their, their, their interest in learning language is keeping up, right? Yeah. So that's what I mean here. But in Taiwan, most of the, the parents and teachers or even educators believe that English is a subject. So they use those the interest. Keep doing that. I mean, you know, uh, we, we, when we find that those students can keep their interest in, 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 uh, in learning the language, step by step, gradually, even though their, their grades are not improving too much, but they still keep that kind of interest. That kind, they, they kind of spark in learning the language, and their English will pick up eventually. So that's what I mean here. So we have the wrong idea. I mean, I really want to introduce that kind of idea, your idea, and my idea, similar idea, into this kind of educational system. Because that's how my kids learn the English. My kids never learn any kind of textbook. It's just, you know, his English comes from storybook. It was in, in, in the States, and then he just read a lot of no, novels, Jane Austen novels, even uh, Shorty Brontis novels, all these kind of novels. And, he got the very, he got the perfect grace in ancient examination without knowing anything about grammar. And that's why I mentioned that it's so conflicted because you see students in Taiwan, not just at school, walking around with their little booklets of the 2,000 essential words in English that they need to study for their good tests. What happens the moment they pass that test, they toss the booklets and the interest is gone. Yeah. So it's conflicting because the school tells you they have to learn these words and these expressions, but at the same time, make it fun and enjoyable. That's why we are we are promoting some sort of bilingual education here in Taoyuan City. But I don't know whether you. That's why you know one of on our workshop, on our agendas of workshop, the first topic I want to do is about so called bilingual education. Now in in Taoyuan City, we are going to we are implementing that kind of policy of bilingual education here on campus, even in this school. It means that you don't have to teach English subject. You can teach physical education, you can teach computer science in English. So you, are, the, 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 you can just expand the kind of English learning experience to other subjects, like arts, performing arts, home economics or home cooking. Now, when you teach students to do some kind of workout, a student will learn the parts of body in English much easier than you just showing some uh, fresh car, say this is the head, this is the shoulder, this is the knees, this is the what. But you tell them, let's do the exercise together. Let's do some kind of the workout together. And they know, they memorize the words by doing that kind of exercise quite easily. And cooking, the same thing. You teach them all these kind of names of fruits or vegetables, they forget them quite easily. But if you do that, you just, you just ask them to make salad, or you have to cook some kind of meat, and they will learn all these kind of ingredients, or all these kind of names of vegetarian, vegetables and, and fruits, easily. No, no, they keep that kind of things for a long, long time. Okay, I learned all the things about cooking and vegetarian, all these kind of vegetables and fruits, not in classroom, but in American supermarket. <laughs> by one of the old ladies who told me how to cook pumpkins. 
把它可口的。哎 ，she share a recipe with me. She said this is wonderful recipe. I learned a lot of things from her. Outside the classroom, just in the supermarket. Right, all these kind of names of fish. Okay, different kinds of fishes. Was that lady so, single though? <laughs> She's too old for me. <laughs> okay. There's nobody that's too old for me. <laughs> so, uh, so that is what we call situation learning. What is, I'm not talking about teaching, I'm talking about the learning. What is situation? All the things. There are two you know, big theories in, in language education. One is called a structural base. The other is called the social cultural theory. Structural based theory is under the big influence by Chomsky. He says that if you learn everything about the language structure, you can master a language quite easily. All the language comes from the structure. We always have that kind of, oh, that kind of universal structure in our mind, either in Mandarin Chinese, in Japanese, or English. Once you catch that kind of language structure, in unconscious, in, in the unconscious, in, without thinking about this, you can know how to use the language. Well, I think it's wrong. But there's no perfect structures inside there. This is assume there's a hidden structure, the structure hidden behind all the language. But he forgets that language is changing all the time. All the structures seem to be, you know, even for all United speakers. The structures for the American, the structures for the South Africa, Africans, the Canadian are all quite different. The way how you learn the language is quite different from each other. That's what I say. Just like we Chinese people, you know, we Taiwanese we learn the language you know, in a way quite different from the, the people in mainland China learn the language. We use the for the simple bo -bo 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 to learn the mainland Chinese. They use what? Pinyin system to learn the language. It's quite different. And do you know how we learn to write the Chinese characters? It's that, not the imitation. It's that... Animals, right? Uh, yeah. Shapes of animals? Shapes. Not really. That's what I mean. No, we, 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 we began to, when, uh, we began to learn the Chinese character by just drawing a picture. That's what I mean, pictures. Yes, pictures. Right, we believe that this we just imitate first, without knowing the meaning of this one. Join the pictures. And many Chinese people learn the Chinese character in different ways. So there will be different kind of structures in, in, in somewhere there. So what I mean is a social cultural theory is a much better idea that which will help us understand how people learn a language. So the cultural theory means what? All this kind of learning, not, not only the language, but also some of our skills, are still added in context. You also have this kind of contextual situation to learn something different from, or to develop, develop some of skills by yourself. You learn driving, you must sit inside a car to learn driving. It's impossible to learn how to drive a car what, with the papers or with documents, or by watching the video on the uh, uh, video clips on the internet, right? You must sit inside. Swimming, the same thing. You have to what? Jump into the water, get almost close to death in order to know how to swim, right? Even computer, the same thing. You must know, you must sit inside in front of computer. That's how Steve Jobs developed his iPhone. Do you know iPhone has no instruction? Manual at all. We used to have another, a huge thick bill of manual, right? To, in order to operate a machine. But the iPhone said that no, you don't need that. You want? You just use it to know how to use the phone. So, this is what I think about learning a language, a learning skill. Knowledge may be a different thing, but skills. Learning a skill. You must put in yourself into situation. That is so called situation learning. Okay, situation so means what? It's an instructional approach developed by Jim Love, the winner, and Vosky. Okay, it's a follow-up work of Vosky. You can so are more inclined to learn by activity and actively participating in the learning 
experience. Okay, little lab coordinator is like learning to ride a bike, a kind of skill learning. Okay, why is still any learning? Here, this was you. Three main characteristics. One is, this is community practice. The knowledge you learn needs to be presented in authentic context. And legitimate peripheral participation means learning is embedded in context, activity, and culture. Just what I mentioned there. You learn, you learn a lot of vocabulary, not from memorizing the words, but from what? Using the verb, words, the vocabulary, into the real, authentic social context. So if you want to teach your student some of the names of fruits, just bring some fruits into the classroom. Cut them and share in two slices and share with them. And when they have to say the name of the apple in order to eat the apple. Right. Yeah. That's a very good student. Yes, that is. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> yes. Professor, other question? Yeah. Okay. Situated learning. Last year we had the EV. That was also situated uh, learning, right? And they closed it down. Ah. I mean, yeah. it depends, depends on how you create. Yeah. You know how you create that kind of situation for learning. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 If it's just for fun, you know, some of these kind of games, so these kind of classrooms are just designed for fun, not for learning. Mm -hmm. You create that kind of environment. For instance, I say that uh, if you want students to know about the the, the, the the name or how to the vegetables, maybe you will ask them to cook. To, to make some kind of salad, right? Some kind of, kind of dressing there. So, and then you introduce some of them, ask them to eat or to make by themselves or share with all the classmates. And then your purpose of, of, of doing that is to introducing, to introduce those names of the vegetables or the fruits. Yeah, that you but if you want to do what? If you want to do, uh, to ask them to make sentences, to say some uh, uh, complete sentence, that is not the right way, right? So I'm going to, that's the more difficult part. Ask the students, you know, it's easy for students to create environment for students to learn the vocabulary. But how about you to combine or to get the vocabulary into a sentence or even to a paragraph to say something meaningful? You, you need to create what? A different kinds of scenarios for this. English bridge might be the same, but your English, the situation in English bridges are ridiculous. Really? <laughs> what do you think? You go through the custom or international airport. Think about that. Have you ever seen anything when you go through the custom? When you go to the supermarket, do you have to say anything at all? No. No. You don't? You don't. When you go through an immigration oh, office, do you have to say anything at all? No, give you the passport. <laughs> Nothing else. Well, that depends on whether you drop cocaine or not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, you don't. The kids, you were, sometimes you were, one of your situations is about banking, right? Is go to the bank. Come on, tell me, how comes a kid of <laughs> seven or eight years old will go to the bank by himself <laughs> to open a car hang, hang on, hang on. That's not the point of though. You've missed the entire point of the English village. Because the point of the English village for one fifth grade class to come once in a term is exposure to the language and to foreign teachers. Exposure to authentic. I, I wrote most of the scenarios for the English right? Village, yeah. right? Yeah. Ten years ago, yeah. I wrote them. This, yeah, that's, that's a problem. Now, now, <laughs> that's a problem. No, no, Students no, 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 English. On. You asked for a contribution. I'm now giving you a contribution because I disagree with quite a lot of what you said. Yeah. Right. Learning through play is a concept that has been around for 15, 20 years. Yes. Right. And, and how you can say this morning that uh, part of the problem is Taiwanese people are shy and don't want to talk to foreigners and can't put the hand up. And then when they have the English village, which is an opportunity for them to be exposed to foreigners, to have some fun, to get used to some of the language, you're now telling us it's wrong. No, no. That it's what not I mean is that exposure is good, but it's supposed to what? It's supposed to, to some of the situation they would never have even 
based upon experience that has exposure is not. It doesn't matter. Not. It doesn't matter as long as they. No, no. You see, no, no. You've got the wrong idea. It's not about a student going through immigration. It's about a student using common language. It's about a student getting used to that language. It's about a student going into a restaurant and asking, saying please and thank you, and getting used to the language. Use the using you know, learning some of language will not be working in their own life. No, learning happens when a individual can relate his own personal experience to that kind of learning object. Not when the hand learning is happening. So Taiwanese children don't go to restaurants. Why well, they want to go to restaurants? Yeah, they do. They exactly. They go to restaurants. They go to hotels. They go to supermarkets. They go to the 7-Eleven. They go to miles. Let me tell you. Yes, it's okay to have situation in village. The situation will be quite different. For instance, considering the, the banking, the banks is totally wrong. I mean, but if I have this kind of voice and the dancing hall, is all right. If that's a family, you know, I I like one of the situation over there is about. The domestic scene, the family union, the people get together, the the, the parent and, and and the kids, the the, the the teacher plays the role of the father or the, or the elder, and then ask them to this is uh, the Christmas, so we just get together, prepare some of the food, and then student can have an interaction with, and have interaction with each other. That's fine, but if you take the student to some kind of situation which are not related to their own life experience, mm -hmm. that is just what. That's the kind of game. Which is which is which I agree with, right? Yeah. Student centered yeah. teaching, like just what this gentleman over here said, right? His lessons are related to their own no, interests. Right. Yeah, that's right. So they're more likely to learn about it. But students know what an ATM card is, they know what money is, they know what a bank is. No, why don't we just create some of the situation you know about this one? You're creating situation which are fit for adults. I want to create the situations which will be good for the kids. What kind of, well, when, okay, you went to the United States. They were, but they were the situations that's, that's in the, the English language was made the, for that. children, right? No, they were no, designed for, children. for kids. We didn't give them adult lessons. They were kids. Most so of the situations are, what have happened to adults? We are, we are talking, we are not, well, I'm not talking about the wrong about the situation exposure here. I, I'm, I'm talking about you have to expose the student to the right situations. Right student. They want to practice it again. It's okay. Like we can create some kind of situation that people, the kids can go over there, play a game, interact with others, and share some of the gifts, free gifts of other games. That's good. Right? Okay, how about the, the, oh, to go to some kind of the party, right? It's like a pajama party. You create that kind of situation for pajama. Because pajama party is something that they will do. The kids. How about your kids? The kids in the United States. Seven years old kid, twelve years old kid will do in what? In a school or outside the classroom. Or is it go to the tennis court? Yeah. They will do that. Right? Gym class. Yes, they will go to the gym class. I'm talking about your situation you create for the kids are for the adult. You can use a pride your adult knowledge into the kids. They that will not be engaged. With the words they learn, well, they will forget about the words quite easily when they walk out of the English classroom. You have to create a situation which are good and fit for their life experience. And there are a lot of experiences you can create for the for kids in English village. But you create a, a situation for what? Well, that's what I don't agree with you. Yeah. I don't agree with you. You don't agree with you? No. Did you, ever, did you ever work in the English village? Did you ever take fifth grade class in the English village? No. I've I, I been there. I've been there. Did you participate? Do you know that learning the, through place? You know how where they can this they, where where they, where, where this uh, big idea idea of English which come from? Korea. They they, they abandon. They shut down all the English bridges. Do you know that? That's because they lost funding. No, no, they that's not working. Listen, I had letters and, and mail. You know what? Have you seen the reports? No, I had letters you see the and mail from students that came to the English village, and even if they walked away from the English village, only knowing how to say please and thank you, it was a success. But and you that, can that is student sentiment. Please, thank you. They still do that in real kids' authentic situations, not in the adult situation. 
What do I mean? Well, we're going to have to agree to disagree. And I, I, no, sorry. I don't. I, I, right. I respect your, 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 your comments on this part. But I think that the, the, in, in, the English bridges and Koreans are shut down because they have evaluation. We do have the evaluation. Some well, reports about We it. have seen those evaluations, and those do not evaluate the claims that we ever made for the English village. Those evaluations were never appropriate for the work that we were doing. No. No. But why, why do you know they do? They, you, it's working there. It's been successful there. Why do they do the funding? Because it's not fashionable anymore, because the political people changed, changed, and they want to put some new idea in. No, not really. If you want a serious answer to that question, well, the answer is the, the election. It's not still possible that, still tell me that, is it possible that the students go to that kind of English bridge for only a, 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 a few, a, a couple of hours, and they learn a lot of things from you, and then that's it? Exposures had to be continuous. Of course, it it does, for a long of course time. but you relate that to us going into a classroom once a week for 40 minutes. It doesn't work. Right? So, where's the exposure? What you're talking about now directly contradicts everything you said this morning. Everything you said this morning. No, yes, no, 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 it's not. It's not. You, you, you missed the point. You missed the point. Yes, yeah, the point. I'd like to say on behalf of the Taiwanese taxpayers, they spend a lot of money building those classrooms. So if it's not effective enough, we should find ways to improve it and not smash down the buildings. We, we so, don't smash And I'm also them. saying this. I'm saying this. Professor Chen, yes. uh, the English village has effect, efficacy. What you're saying also has efficacy. Why compete the ideas instead of saying they're multi-pronged approaches yes, yes, to learning yeah, you and teaching? Yes. I, think, I think both have very good points here, but I think what Professor Chen wasn't, he wasn't really trying to struck down the idea of English English. Because, well, well uh, for, for one thing, every kid and every parent who have been through the, the EV program, it's all been positive response. response okay? And we know that EV does work in some ways, but we need to face the fact Face the music that there are some parts of the EV that can't really help the majority of the students in okay. Taiwan City. Well, yeah, let me hear you. Year. One thing is that it's a rotation, it's a sign up schedule. So that means the school comes in once in a while. Mm -hmm. The students That's rotate every time. Mm -hmm. So even though once it's a life. wonderful chance for them to be exposed to the environment, but mm -hmm. the fact remains that to be, for them to be able to, for this, be able to work, they need a lot more. They need long duration of exposure, yeah, not yeah, just once yeah, in a while. Yeah. That's not but what I'm no, saying. No, what I'm I know, saying I know, is I know, I know that it is saying. a positive learning experience yes. for the children. And for him to say they don't learn anything because their adult situations I think, demeans the work okay. that has been put into that let's, project let's, for the last let's 10 years. Let's talk about why the government wants to change That's the irrelevant. It's, okay. irre it's irrelevant. I'm just saying that no, don't this, demean this the This is not a political yeah. issue. I mean, yeah. when we talk about this kind of the success or achievements of contribution of English, English village, I'm not talking about whether there's nothing good about English British. I'm talking about I'm not talking about nothing good about think, English British. I think the professor is saying that he's, he's not saying that the English British is yes. worthless or something. He's saying that he wants to get take the experience from what we have from the EV and then expand it to something else, which is he was what he was talking about, which is the whole language program. Okay. So bilingual education. About. Yeah. He was saying that he was hoping to use the EV experience and to turn every subject in the primary school or the junior high school program into a bilingual program where the foreign teacher will be teaching more than one subject. We'll be teaching, uh, you'll be teaching PE, you'll be teaching arts, and that way the kids will get the full exposure of the bilingual program instead of just a particular group of kids who only enjoy the EV once a while. The, that, that's the point here today. Once in their lifetime, you know, they just come over here once in their lifetime mm -hmm. and they forget about everything about mm -hmm. the learning in the English way. I'm not talking about there's no function for English way. There will be different kind of function for English bridge, and you have to develop much better situation for that one. And and they say that well, I designed that kind of banking situation because they they that's part of exposure. Yes, that's part of exposure. But the kids of that age will not expose that kind of situations. You can benefit more from... You can benefit, you might create that kind of, for instance, dancing yeah, class. But you can say that about anything, right? True, They true. can benefit more from kind of all sorts yes. of things. Yeah, right? children don't sure. cook. Don't their cook. mother cooks. No, <laughs> children cook. Yeah, yeah. Children cook, they yeah. They get burned. My kids, my kids cook. Cook some of the very simple ones. Yeah, uh, cook. A child of each. 
Seven, eleven, or twelve years old, or even they have the home cooking class in Chinese. Home cooking class. Home cooking class. They cook. Can you give some funding? I earn seventy-one thousand. If I buy watermelons and pineapples for the children every day, I'm going to be broke and poor, and I'm not going to be in a relationship because no, money equals love. No, sometimes, sometimes they put what we're doing in in Taizhou. Sometimes you can ask, they say, the student to, to bring their favorite fruit into the classroom. That's the situation. You can ask them that you want, you want to, you can bring your favorite food from the, and ask their parents to buy the favorite food and bring them to Taiwan. If they can find something very special and they can say that, oh, this is a special, like a kiwi so, or star fruit, or even they can learn something from that kind of real fruit. That's what I mean by real situation. And we don't create artificially, artificial situations still, which are not good for the learning spirit. We must, all the situations must be related to their personal experience. There are a lot of situations you can create to relate it to well, students. Well, that's kind of directly opposite to constructivist cognitive theories. So, no, this is there's still exposure, it's still still something there. I mean, what I criticize here, maybe you, you don't feel happy, but what I criticize is that some of the situations there are not good. That yes, was what I mean yes, here. Yes, I, I don't, I don't hesitate to do that. When you go to the, yeah, he says, you, what are your points that? Oh, we just have their exposure. Yeah, they have exposure. They can go to any kind of exposures. But what I mean that exposure must be related to a personal experience. The, the, you have to design your, your situation based upon the. You, that's the that's eleven years old kid, right? What can they go through? Okay. Well, then Talks we'll have to agree to disagree because as far as I'm concerned, the scenarios were designed for fifth graders, not for adults. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Let's carry and move on. So, for the kids, I mean, not only the, the, the 11 years old kid, I mean, for the kids, for the young adults, but the fun, not for the adults. And right now, even in the modern world, we go to, sometimes we, we, we don't use the, we don't speak any English in any kind of situation that I go through the immigration office. Or customs, security check, right? They ask you to take off, and you, they always show you. They show you how to do that. You don't have to speak anything at all. Thank you. So, or even also store, yes. Thank you. Um, I I not much familiar with the EV problem, but um, from all of this, I think, or maybe I should ask, does this not? Well, down to social awareness that uh, maybe some of the people here are familiar with an 11 year old going to the bank, maybe accompanied by a parent, uh, to open a bank account. And then that is relevant to another social standing. And here he was using what he's uh, found to be relevant to the learners at his school. Like, this is what they're exposed yeah, to. Yeah, I understand. I understand. There we, okay, my. Question, my answer to your 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 your, your doubts or confusion about this kind of there will be different levels of social awareness. You have to design that kind of level of social awareness for the kids that is they they don't they don't learn just from your class. They for instance they still if they, they have to learn about banking uh, system they are, they will know that later in the middle school in the high school in the, in the university they know how to use the ATM. It doesn't mean that they go to, so you have to, you know, use different levels of social awareness to design your situation. Not just design the situation that they will use maybe when they come to the age of 25. That's what, I mean. that what I mean here. Yes, banking, yeah, they will have lack exposures later in their life. It doesn't mean that I have to learn it. If, if that's working there and, and, and you have to teach all the kids everything. They have to learn in their life. Okay, let me just say one last thing, right? <laughs> one last thing. I kept my mouth shut all morning, right? So, no, 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 so he just allow, oh, me, okay. allow me to say Sure, that. sure, sure. No, no, way, no problem, problem with that. You can talk about it. The key to a good lesson and good class management is an engaging lesson. Yes. If you have an engaging lesson, you don't have class management problems. Because all of the students are interested in engaging. Yes. Right? Now, taking the one that you're using, the example, the bank scenario. The kids were excited and engaged to be a part of getting an ATM card and going to the machine that they had and getting the money out, right? And that was a happy village because they actually had a bank, okay. right? Mm -hmm. Now, 
The principle is not the fact that they're going to the bank. The bank is just the idea on which to hang the language on. Right? It's the language that they're using. It's not about banks and ATM cards and opening bank accounts. It's about finding something to use the language with. Okay? Responding to your elaboration here. They have no choice. That's the only bank. Like McDonald's. Okay, McDonald's. Yeah, McDonald's. Why, why don't you think that if you McDonald's create different kind of situations, students have more, much more engagement than the banking situation? Because they were engaged, because it was exciting to them. Did How you do you know that the other too? thing would be more exciting than the bank? But it wasn't, and you weren't there, and you didn't teach it, so don't tell me I was oh, there. Oh, but then you decided it's not a banking, so I said it's wrong. That's my point. Why don't you just create some situation for the kids instead of for the adults? How about retention? Oh, you can create some kind of skiing program. For instance, you ask the student, now let's go to skiing, skating, or playing the ball. It will be more, it will be more fun. They still have more. They still have engaged. No matter what kind of situation you design for them, you know, they have. But you're now contradicting yourself. No. Yeah, I did that. What I mean is that, what I mean is that, I don't want to argue here, here. So, sorry for this one. But now what I mean is that, you, you design, you, we design some of the situations. The study is based upon what? Our knowledge about the adult world. Am I right? So, we, if, that's right. If you, you think the adult world is a prelude to a student's life experience later, then all the elementary school classes have to change. We can introduce college classes into the elementary classes because they still have to face in the future, right? But, that, but that's the point. The English village was not used as a prelude to their later life. It was just an experience to practice English. Why don't you have the kids' experience? Why, why do you have need to develop an adult experience? experience. student-centered, project-based, interactive, immersive learning. Right, you should look at it. There will be a lot of situations for exposures. Yeah, but Can you think of yes. other hang situations? On, hang on, think hang about on. your kids. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> think about hang your on. kids. What, I, just hang, on, hang on. You do the best you can with the resources you have. We saw the kids once a week. We were provided with the, re with the scenarios. We didn't build them. Look, the same as now. We have 40 minutes once a week. That's, and that's we do the best we can to teach them the best we can. That's my point. You have to make the best use of your resources. But that kind of banking system, the original design is wrong. So we can change that. We want to change that. So the situations are fixed there. You cannot change all the kind of setting or kind of layouts there. We have to change that. Right? It doesn't mean that because it's bank, banks are already there and we have to do the bank. It's still being used. Some yeah. of the, the banks do have to do something else. For instance, in the banks, the people will lose something there, right? Or you, you can create the, the, the situation which you, which you experience, which you will be experienced by the kids. Yes, Professor, I like that, yeah. because you can improve it. Don't waste the time. So, you, okay, waste the time. so that, let's come back to your purpose here. Yes. I mean, situations. You create situations, the real, authentic one. The social health theory tells you that you have to create the authentic situation which are closely related to individual personal experience, not just the artificial, meaningless, or even the adult experience for the kids. What, that's what I mean here. I don't think that, yeah, past is past. Past is past. We want to change, we, we, we wish that this kind of English bridge can still function quite well with this kind of situation that we see. Do you understand what I mean? No. Right now, in the past, when you go through an immigration office, you have to say something, you get cram or baggage cram, you will do a lot of things. But right now, because of this automatic system, we don't do that anymore. So why don't we just change to other situations? When you go through the customer immigration inspections, do you say anything at all? No. We don't even the adults don't say any, at least you, you are illegal immigrants. That way people will stop you, right? Or check your luggage. Otherwise, you just go through without saying any words. But in the English village, I would put I would put a scissor in the bag, a dog in the bag, hamburger in the bag, and then the sensor goes off, and the children get happy. 
and then we, you know, have a little discussion. And then you say, what's this? And they go, scissors. So yeah. Scissors, by the way. So you encourage them to say that it's a fun to carry illegal items to their customer. <laughs> exactly. It's fun to carry illegal items to their customer. Exactly. That's wrong. Exactly. If they do that, they will be caught in the airport. At the airport, they go with their mom and dad professor. So I think you know. Is, so it's some kind of game, is that right? Yes, it's a you ask the kids to do some illegal it's thing. <laughs> that, it's kind of explosion. Yes, like that's good. Yeah, I like agree. The, the thing is, there. you have a very poor opinion of the English village, and nothing's going to change that. So let's move on. Let's forget the English village. Move on. And you say that I don't have, I have no, I have poor knowledge of English British. I have to say that so you have known nothing about the British. Because the British in other countries are shut down. Why? They shut down here as well. Because they go once a year for Because do you know, we are going to do some kind of variation of English village. We got we just uh, come by a test to see that what is how students can accomplish or do or learn something yeah. from the English village. Do you know the result? It doesn't matter. We know your opinion on English village. Everybody knows my opinion on English village. It's not gonna change, but let's move on. On to the next topic. Yeah, well that's Stay is the last question. It's got nothing to do with Evie, okay? I just wanna get back to what Gabriel said, okay? Um, I teach grade 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 at my school. Yes. I cannot use like social media to teach grade 1s and 2s. It's, 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 it's not going to work. Yes. So uh, the question that I have is, when it comes to the situation of tea, I understand, I understand what you're trying to say. You understand what you're saying about you know, not kind of teaching different subjects, you know, making them interesting. Um, my question is that, sorry, with, with the grade 1s, so especially with the younger kids, it's a little bit tricky to do situational teaching. Because they don't have the base yet to be able to get into a conversation with you. Um, it, it, that's why we do vocab, that's why we teach keywords yes. and stuff, because they don't have a base yet. Yeah, if once they don't have that kind of basics, you know, they, they, they're lim they're, 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 the words of the English are quite limited. So yes, why don't you yes, just yes. have liberty, a very low level yes, yes. of English competency? To do something else, yes. to design. This is more difficult. Right? If you teach the low level classes, it's more difficult for you. It's easier for me to teach in college, in university, because I can use whatever I want to do my teaching. But if you teach the first grade, grader or second grade later, the language, the communication, that thing is quite limited. Yes, yes, yes. So that's a big challenge to you. So you design something which they understand or they can find. Like they, they, they happen to find fun mm -hmm. for, for your yes. activities or games. So games, activities, or this kind of learning by doing will be more important than just ask them to do this kind of drill or practice. What I, just, what, what I was wondering is, is it, isn't it correct to say that situational teaching is maybe better suited to the older kids? No, it's, it's for students it's, it's for older ages. It's all the ages, especially for the, the young kids. Okay. Okay. Give them some kind of real life situation that they can play with the world, play with the English. Mm -hmm. like professor, what I mean. you said that my class is boring, right? But I'm going to take your idea and adapt it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Are you happy? I'm, I'm kidding. No, no, no. Just, I'm also kidding. Sometimes I'm boring kidding. class works. Do you know what I mean? You know, because students have different kinds of way of learning. Sometimes this kind of training technique will work. It, it depends on the, you know, some of the high IQ students don't like, I, 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 say my, I, I don't like play games. When I was a kid, I had to play games. I want to sit there and teachers to give me something, I can memorize everything quite easily. I, had, I feel embarrassed playing the games in front of all the other people. So, what I mean is that, we don't talk. We don't talk about the perfect pedagogy. We don't talk about the perfect methods in the classroom. We talk about the different kinds of you have to experience. You can use different kinds of methods to try to see that which one is good for which students and which one is good for the other students. Okay, that's, that's my point. If your boring class works, fine, stick no, no. to that. I'm going to get better. I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm, I'm not talking about your class. I know that, but I want yeah. to get better. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to take it.
Okay, traditional learning curve from abstract or the context period, so lectures and books, theory learning, suggests the learning takes place through the relation between people and connected prior knowledge with authentic, informal, and often unintended contextual learning. This is so called. How to create context for learning. Here, yeah, activities, adding art, in verse, and animals for day teaching work. Why do you want to teach animals? It's more fun for the teacher. You create today. We're going to open the zoo. I don't like this <laughs> class. <laughs> right? You teach animals. You want to teach animals. You class. You get a class. You say that today we want to open the zoo. I'm the zookeeper, and then each one of you will play what? Play different kind of lion, different kind of zoo. And in this class, you're going to do this kind of sound, make a sound, so of, of, uh, yes. Like um, professor, I, um, I just said something to you right now, and I'm thinking out loud that sometimes in situations like that, you just never know if you are crossing the line. I mean, cultural background and cultural awareness. For instance, you say, we are going to open a zoo. I'm a zookeeper, and I say, you are animals. I don't know how that is going to be received. <laughs> No, it's a fun. It's, it's okay. It's okay. Maybe it's not a fun. No, no, no. Like somebody from the show trying to pick. They pick. They pick up their own 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 animal. So you can if you are you are you are afraid of crossing the the lines. You can check with the local teacher to see that it's working or not. Yes, the local teacher. You can ask local teacher to is it's okay for me to play this kind of game or what? Yeah. For like now, I was teaching. I was teaching a game. Yeah. And they had to speak a lot because um, um, it, it's about what can I do and what can I not do. And there's a line that says, I can speak a little English. And I looked at the teacher and I saw, he came to me and he said, um, well, not that all of them can speak a little, a little English. So maybe you should take that line out. <laughs> Yeah, so you have to check check with the uh, local teachers to see that where you can walk. But so really, you never know. Sometimes you just tiptoe around certain ideas because of cultural awareness and social awareness, such things. That's how you learn from the local teachers, right? Yes. Okay. Teaching numbers, or teaching colors, or teaching family members. You can ask them to draw a family tree. Or you can, you can ask them to do you can, the, the family book or whatever, right? So it's much easier for them to learn about the family members. Instead of just showing the, the, the card and ask them to memorize it, or it's going to It's much easier. Games. Now that's a game. Now we're supposed to have Matthew to teach, to give him some of his... Uh, Good morning, balls. What is that game about? Is it about balls? <laughs> Yeah, it's a ball, it's a real oh, ball, yeah. it's a real ball, yeah. you know, Matthew is, and I, I, I'm sure he's a, Matthew, is a, this afternoon, Matthew is going to, but he, he, he's sick, so he can like, come, sorry. Yeah. he used a lot of morning ball, morning ball, it's, it worked quite well, people can speak a, a, a complete sentence, you know, most of you, and he just pass the ball around to see that uh, they can just learn something, they can do the reflection and memories about what they learned from the last week, okay? Games. Sorry, that could be useful. Uh, would you yes. would you mind would you mind describing the rules of that game? Yeah. Okay, maybe it's a little bit com complicated. It's easy to pray, but okay, maybe you mean the game? Yeah, yeah. We, we do that one. Uh, it's uh, you pass the ball around. Okay. And so they use uh, they use uh, he used about three colors of a ball. It's a three color ball, right? Green, red, and blue. And the red in, in on the red ball he said good morning or something over there. And green ball they he said this ball. And then he just passed around the ball. And to say, when well, you catch that kind of ball, if you say the words and then check with the other the other and then throw the ball to the other members. Kids love it. Yeah. Yes, because the catching is a catching a ball. Oh, okay. And they the ball is flying in the air, you know. And they catch different kinds of balls and to see different kinds of world sentences. So that's that's the more important to say hello to each other. So the thing that they say is predetermined. Yeah. It's yeah. on the ball. It's on the ball. Oh, it's a code. It's a code. Yeah. You gotta pass to to warm up the class. Thank you. Okay. So another thing. So yes. Yes. It's okay. <laughs> Professor, 
Um, I just wish maybe one day as um, the Department of Education can one day maybe sit with the curriculum implementers. Because right now, you, you're saying maybe the, the issue of the English villages is, is, is phased out and it's, it's, no longer, it's no longer working. It's not working. It didn't work. I, but I, don't, right mean, I now, don't mean the English village is not working. I mean, some of the situations are not working. Okay, mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say... I'm, I'm, I'm saying that. Don't worry. <laughs> like, I'm going to the point that uh, maybe if you can sit with the curriculum implementers yeah. and then give the, the schools the topics on, how, on what we should teach. Because right now, I'm given the topics to teach about shopping, I'm given the topic to, to teach about immigration and airplane cabin, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, it, it, I mean, I wish you could sit down and, 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 and yeah. look at the important topics to teach about. Yeah, we are doing that. We are just trying to, you know, and later, we may not use the fixed settings of the, we may use the, or the VR to create, things, so you can change the situation all the time. You don't have to, you know, you, well, right now we have about six or seven situations, right? Six or seven situations. Yeah, the best fix is already there, you cannot change that, it's the, it's the hardware there. So we're going to use the, 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 the AR or VR to create different, so you can change that. You're using that kind of situation is not working. You can change to different kind. You can design your own. So that's more flexible. Yeah. Okay, here. Another reminder. After the games, please do that. Because in Taiwan, students have no chance. You know, in the United States or in native speaker, in native speaker's environment, people go home, they have a lot of exposures, you know. In TV, on TV, so to their family. But students in Taiwan have no chance to practice their oral skills. So you need something to internalize their oral skills. That means you have to do some worksheets. Once they write down something there. Yes? Is it homework or you, you, you may take it home? Either turn, or, 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 in, in class. In class. In class. In class. For instance, you, you, you teach them six words, right? Six words. Or oh, is and they, no, you, <laughs> you, yes, six words, yeah. Six, six, six. Oh, you think that those six words. And then you ask them to practice, and you, you ask them to, in Susela world, in, 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 in phonetic ways, and then you, you will ask them to write down, or maybe memorize the down, by using that kind of, you know, give them some kind of, Watches. And writing is a good way to internalize what they learn orally. Okay. Because they have no time, they have no opportunity or no practice at home, outside the classroom. So writing, work, ask them to do some worksheets will be a good way to internalize, to transfer everything into their own mind. Wash it. I just want to skip that part because you all you know about the wash it, right? Just go wash it. So this is, uh, I just give you some suggestion. Maybe you don't have follow this kind of the ideas there. So how to organize your class? Five minutes for one up, and then five, uh, about five, five minutes for the left focus, either your school textbook or your supplementary materials. Or your game or TVs, either way, you don't have to have fun game. I mean, your game, the drill, your practice will be fine with that. Then 10 to 15 minutes, and your worksheet, and then you, again, you have some kind of TV songs for 10, 5 to 10 minutes, and you have check up, check up uh, time, 3 or 5 minutes for exercise card checklist. This is the, the what I call an ideal classroom, the class arrangement for about these 40 minutes. There will be, you divide the whole class into two sections. The first part is the, the today's language focus, and some kind of TV, some kind of worship, and the last part will be just another, the, you know, the fraction of the, uh, the, the, the formal, the, the first part of the sections, and then you have a check of time, okay? This is the ideal class arrangement for one period. That's the point.
it's important for your students, for you, for you to reflect, right? So I strongly advise you to design this kind of access card, the topic, ask your students, I learned something, was able to uh, competently, I'd like to learn more about this one. You can, if you don't, if you still cannot, then read the English, you can ask the, the Chinese teacher to write in Chinese, load it to try in Chinese. Okay, at least enjoy most enjoy. This kind of checklist for you, either for you or for students to see that uh, how much they have learned from this 40 minutes class. <coughs> or you can use the SS card, right? A new learning opportunity today was uh, today I confirmed that I still want that. Okay, you, you can put it into press you know, in Chinese, even in Chinese, ask them as a student to write down what they learn or what they miss or what they have to improve. Yes. Um, I don't know how I can frame this question, but everybody here knows I'm very new, not as a teacher, but certainly in the school yes. and certainly in Taiwan. And what my observations have been in eight days of being at the school is my question to you then is, because I know all this, sorry, but we do know these things. What is the expectation of today, I finished eight days, tomorrow is going to be two months, day after it's going to be six months. My students at the junior high school can barely ask me five questions in English in the short time of verbal words we've done. We're doing greetings just so they get to know me. I've got to, uh, many classes that I go to. So what is the expectation then from this program for say myself with a lot of experience to come to a level where my students at a grade seven, eight and nine can actually write that without a, a, a local teacher explaining. I want to get to this level, but where do we have an expectation when I'm on the same page as yours? Yeah, I, I don't mean the uh, my answers to your questions. Are, I don't ask. I don't mean that they have to write in English, in in write uh, their own reflections or SSK in in English here. They can write something very simple one and, and then you can give them some okay. kind of fixed sentence That's business fine. there. Yeah. The second one is the, the second English is okay. yeah. The second one is uh, you have to check with the local teacher. Now most of the time you work with your local teacher to see that what do you expect me yeah. to yeah. teach this them to learn something from me. Because I cannot lose the trust yeah. that I have built. Yeah. It's very important that the gentleness the abilities that are there, yeah. it's a wonderful, <coughs> the capability of the teachers are yeah. tremendous. Yeah. I don't expect them to become a full English language speaking teacher so, confident, yeah. but there's nothing wrong in what yeah. they're doing. The changes have to be subtle. Yes. And I hope for that understanding in the entire observation of the department that comes to a school like mine. Mm -hmm. It's not a reflection of me as a teacher, it's what I have to do safely for the student and my colleagues. And that's needed to be understood today, and I brought it up because okay. I think we're all in that same situation. Okay, I got your message. But I don't feel like the question was really well answered because, like, the local teachers' expectation. My question is, what does the what do you like the administration? What do they want us? What are the expectations? Because I feel like I have no goal that has been established or spoken to me to reach towards. So what is the specific goal, maybe for like each grade or for the general semester? Even? Are you in what elementary is the, school or the junior middle school, junior high school? Are you in the elementary school? Okay. But shouldn't the goal for the bilingual program all be, what, what should we want to reach? What is the tangible goal towards which we should be working? I just mentioned two goals here. One is that to keep the interest in learning the language, right? Keep the student interest in learning the language, not to lose the interest. So don't teach them grammar, some difficult things. The second you is going to kind of some kind of fluency. They can communicate with you even in poor English. They they believe that English is the tool, is the is kind of way of communication that who they are going to use in in the later life. Keep interest in learning and then using the language to communicate with native speakers. That is the two, that's, those are two purposes for English education in primary school. But in junior, middle, junior high school, the challenge will be bigger. Because they have ancient, they have ancient examinations. Yes, absolutely. That's why, so reading, because in ancient examination, uh, they, they, they test only the, the, the reading skills and listening comprehension, right? So you can do more about 
improving the listening communication. I want to improve the speaking. I want their confidence to come. Once they, they can talk, they focus. can speak, they can speak, they, they, they have to improve their listening too. Oh, right? completely so. Yes. They're, they're lacking in confidence and I think that's what I want to do is make them just be comfortable to start greeting. And yes. they have. It's amazing. Yeah. They're starting so with good morning in the corridors and good afternoon in just eight days with so many students. So, so you have achieved of the course, goals we just absolutely. set up for you. Absolutely. Yeah. That's right. what my purpose is. It's small, yes. but it's achieved. Um, yes. uh, I'm going to try to recruit, uh, with the uh, recruitment. But during uh, the, the early stages for uh, junior high school teachers, um, from Wen Chong, they instructed us to tell the teachers that when they interview, they got to do a demonstration on teaching grammar. Okay, so here's something I think that professor might not know because are the school, are the schools, the junior high schools, do they have any expectations for the foreign teachers to teach grammar? No. Because that's a very big topic. Yeah, no, I, I don't think that's a good idea. I no, think the, to expect the foreign teacher to teach grammar is so one of the ridiculous I've ever heard. I mean, no. the, the school, the, the, there's no more teacher can teach you grammar. They teach you a lot of grammar. How comes that you still have to ask you to teach the grammar in that kind of very systematical way? No, I don't think that's a good idea. May I talk to you? The, the, the person in charge to so see that so you know, teaching grammar is a good idea. Teaching reading, yeah, teaching reading is a good way. I mean, if you don't, my idea is that let me ask: yeah. Is that possible that you teach reading without teaching grammar? Think about this one. Yeah, you teach student how to read, right? And, and this kind of reading skills, fluency or, or reading aloud or even uh, reading comprehension, all this kind of stuff there, critical thinking, without teaching grammar. Yes. This is a challenge to you. Yeah. That's, a, that's what I want. Yeah. Okay? Let me agree about something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Teaching, reading, without. So you have to ask the foreign teachers to, to teach reading reading skill without teaching grammar. Well, it's much easier for the local team. They always think that reading is part of the grammar teaching. No, that's wrong. I used to teach, I always teach reading without touching any kind of grammatical terminologies. Don't have to, right? So how, how can you manage that kind of skills of teaching your students how to read? Without asking them, oh, this is a subject, this is a verb, this is an adjective, and they have to use this. Uh, 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 this uh, uh, clause is an adjective clause, is an adverbial. This is a adverbial clause. You, no, you don't have. You don't have to teach them all this kind of stuff. You can learn how to say it and what it means without having to learn why it means it. Okay. So forget about asking the foreign teacher to teach you grammar. Oh. Professor, I'm going to do another thing for you. Okay. We spoke about reflections. Okay. I'm going to do reflections with my kids once a month. Yeah, thank you for this one. <laughs> <laughs> can you change the uh, slide back to the class time breakdown? Yes, yes, thank you. Oh, wait. Yes, thank you. This is I didn't get it all. I'm sorry, I want to write it down. Okay, why don't you just take a picture? We have to finish that because the, the lunch box are already here. We are ready for the lunch box here. Okay. Some Tour to have you there. Right? Okay. okay, I want to explain the last, the last word I want to say about today's uh, workshop. This is the model. The rules I think is quite effective here. Take this one. If English is a kind of skill here, so there will be several factors which will influence the way how you transfer. You have one of skill from one person to another. For instance, you, from teacher to the students. Two determining factors. One is the so-called touch distance. The other is called interdisciplinary. The longer the distance, 
the deeper or the, the, the more skills, the higher skill you are going to develop for your student. What, what do I mean the, 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 the task distance? means that the more task, the same task you do the over and over again, or even different kinds of task with the same purposes, you extend that kind of distance by doing the job, then the student will have better transforming you know, uh, 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 effectiveness from you here, that's the first one. But this is not enough, interdisciplinary means that you have to teach students from different kinds of discipline, from different, by using different activities. Story readings, computering, you know, computer stuff, or, or social media stuff, or even the board games, or all these kind of so-called are, are part of this interdisciplinary. Means that I'm not teaching English only, I'm teaching something else which are related to the use of a language. By doing this one, students can, can transfer, get them a lot of things much easier in the skill learnings. And the retention will be longer. So that's why we promote the bilingual education. We believe that, yes, you can teach, you can, you can, you can teach any kind of, you can teach how to play the basketball. Yeah, the, the, the children how to play the basketball, the, the students learn how to play the basketball in English. And then in, 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 the, in, in the basketball field, and they learn something or something from you, or some of the, the, the verbs, the use of the verbs, some of these uh, terminologies in, in, in the games. So they will remember, memorize the words much easier than the English classroom. Mm. So what I mean is, it's a, and story, a novel, story reading is the same thing, picture reading is the same thing. Students read the novels or not a story, not to learn English, but to know the ending, to know the plot of a story. But incidentally and incidentally, accidentally, they learn something, they learn some English from the story. That, that's what I mean. And then, if you do that, long, long distance in, in your task, more of these kinds of, you know, different kinds of activity, different kinds of disciplines, learnings, and the skill will go, you know, will go the higher and the deeper than you expect it. Don't teach them just pure English. Today is something else. If you teach them, if you say that, well, we uh, Americans always take a shower twice a day, and we take a shower in the morning, you take a shower in the afternoon, and then they will remember the word take a shower. No, yes, listen, take a shower. So you talk about your culture, you talk about your cultural difference, you talk about something quite outside the English context, learning context, and then pick up that kind of words much easier than you can imagine. That's what I mean here. This is the, the successful model for skill transferring. So don't do something else. And then, but still have language teaching and learning in mind when you do something else. You know how to call it, what I mean here, right? You can do something else besides just te teaching pure language. But when you teach something else, teach culture stuff, teach them how to play computer game, teach them how to read the novels, how to do some kind of mini filming, it's fine. But still keep, when you do something else, you still have a language teaching in mind. Yes. Um, I think I want to speak for all of us here, for different schools. Can this very message be delivered to every school? Okay. Because I think they need to know we are here to be creative and to do something that's relevant to a classroom, a school, an age level uh, scenario. If it's raining okay. today, maybe a teacher is going to talk about the rain. Yeah. And the school needs you to know where to, still... to the principal or to the local teacher? To the principal, because I think the principal is in charge of the schools that we're at. Am I okay. correct? I will do that this afternoon. Right. Yes, in, let in them Chinese. know. Freedom. Oh, <laughs> the freedom. The freedom. Uh, yeah. Yeah.
We're going to, you know, what, curriculum, yeah, but curriculum, yeah. freedom I'm to use language. I'm going to do that late, late this afternoon in Chinese to the principals of all your schools. But I'm not saying communication breakdown is doing a lot of the things that you're saying. Interdisciplinary. Yeah. Yeah. Not only English, yeah. and we have collaborative education, and it can only be improved. If it's possible, if you are in a small school, your school is a small one, you can do more than just teaching English, you can teach some other subjects. If you, if the principal thinks, thinks okay, I mean, we are promoting this kind of the idea, this kind of programs in many school, elementary and junior high in Taoyuan City. So may I give you an idea? For example, I've noticed in this one week of teaching, there are gifted students. They're English, they've come from an English speaking school. They're sitting there isolated amongst another 29 students. I requested, I get those students for an hour a week to develop a, a bit of a debate club or a, or a speaking and then they can stand on a stage, do a dialogue in English at the end of two months of the whole of the grade seven class, watch them and feel it a wow. Yeah. But I need to know if I can do that. So please mention that to the principals. Okay, sure. Those are ideas we have. Be a lot it would be gentle, it will be to the students who can speak, the ones who are comfortable with a new teacher and there you set something in place. Maybe six months later there'll be 15 students. Okay, good, good. And Besides more, more. pure English classes, it's going to do something more than just teaching. Yes, yes. and put it in my timetable, yeah. something yeah. like yeah. that. You can do that. Mm -hmm. Still keep language teaching in mind. You are teaching the language. So, you include, you can just bring a lot of things into your classroom or you can expand your interest into other subjects but still keep in mind that students learning of a language is your first concern normal reading theoretical performance fine debating fine cooking fine so but still learning the language is still yeah. So, what I was trying to explain before is that there is a communication breakdown between you and the, the schools, the okay. principals. Because right That's now, job. I yeah. am given the topics okay. to teach about shopping, shopping, and immigration. You know, so I have to teach about those uh, topics. Yeah. So you know, I I cannot teach about my culture and stuff like if that. If you don't mind, I mean. We will ask you to send ten in your syllabus to me, and I will check the syllabus. If you have any other creative ways, innovative ways of teaching English, fine with me. And I will help you with you are you are convincing the principles of your syllabus. Okay, so that be okay. That if you ten in your syllabus or lesson plans, and I uh, you have problem. If you have problem with the principal or the school. And you turn in your syllabi and ask them to give it to me and I will go to check with the principals or the local teachers to see that this is okay. If, if I may, I know in, in America at least we're accustomed to uh, dealing with issue, this uh, issue by planning with reference to a series of standards, which are like a detailed document about, uh, about, about standards. I know that, that, that standards exist in Taoyuan County, but I don't think it's been translated in English. Can we get access? to uh, the, the, the educational standards? I have, I have, I, I have a copy in English, but it's 10 years old. Yeah, I, I have that too. Yeah. Oh, keep this, uh, write this down. We need the uh, English curriculum, yeah, kind of curriculum standards. Yeah, yeah in like English. I, I know this document exists. Okay. Yeah, thank you for it. It's probably the same as you but it's, 10 years ago. No, I changed it. Yeah. So you have a new curriculum. Oh, you changed it? It's probably it's British school. Yeah. Uh, professor, it's, it's probably from the United States. Okay, that's yeah. the last time. It's the last time. We just start here. Thank you for your... Thank you for your discussion. Thank you for your discussion.